Welcome to the adventure on Pumlin on W4CY Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures of Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with John Lundine, Sage Weaver, Andy Hershey from the band. It's called Point North. Nice. <laughs> that was pretty sick, Sage. I like how you handled that. I'm glad they brought you in the band because <laughs> we did an interview before. I don't think it was that smooth. <laughs> I'm here now. Nice. So, first of all, what do you guys think of this weather for Rockville, man? I, I think as a band, I'd be, like, so excited that there's a breeze, and it's not... I was just in Costa Rica for three months, so I came back to Florida. I'm like, oh, it's nice and cool here. <laughs> it's not that bad. We, yeah. we spent uh, the last couple of days in Myrtle Beach, and it was warm. Huh? It was gorgeous. It was warm, but it was gorgeous. Right. And today, I was expecting, like tumultuous Yell. temperatures and hell, hell basically. not not bad nice breeze we we caught this the, our set was like a little early on so it wasn't like blaring heat yet there wasn't i don't know it was great it feels great out here i got you guys locked out man because usually by now i'm like soaking wet just from sitting here sweating I mean, we got off stage and we were all drenched i <laughs> bet it was really bad but i feel like the breeze Makes up for the humidity and the heat. And sure. at least you didn't pass out, because normal Florida weather, oh, I yeah. don't even know how bands perform in normal Florida I don't weather. either, and I'm in a band. Right? I don't, I don't get it, yeah, yeah. That's why I live down near West Palm, and nobody comes down there anymore, and that's probably why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nobody wants to go to hell. Right. <laughs> I got off the bus today, and I was like, it's so hot. Like, it was, I was like, I tried any chance to get in the shade. It's, it's so nice, for sure. So, yeah. And how cool is it to play in the Daytona International Speedway? Oh, my goodness. So cool. First of all, shout out to Danny Wimmer, who, like, no matter what the venue is, always puts on an amazing production. But to have it in the middle of a fucking racetrack is so cool. I know. it's ba You know what's funny about it, too? Like, to Danny, and what you're saying about Danny Wimmer, like... Here, it really feels cool that you're in a racetrack. Like, you feel the vibe that you're in the Daytona Speedway. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. when I do something like Download, which is also in a Speedway, I don't feel like I'm in a Speedway. Sure. The way that whatever they do to transform that, sure. I, don't, I like that I'm sitting here and I'm driving in the Speedway to get to my parking, yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I keep saying this during the interviews, but, like, last year I was asking Christine up there, I'm like, you know, I got my skateboard with me. Do you think I'll lose my media pass if I go take it out on the speedway? And she's like, yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but I, I brought it again this year. I was telling friends, yeah, like, if I break my arm, it's worth it. Because look at that wall. Like, oh, you don't see that on TV. Oh, it's crazy. Right? It's hard to climb. Yeah. I Like, I'm joking about it, but I'm thinking to myself... I'm definitely, if I go up on that wall with my skateboard, I'm going to eat shit. Oh, period. for sure. Yeah. The, for sure. No doubt about no, it. We like hitting it in the golf carts. That's the fun part. For yeah, us. right? Yeah. How fun is that? So fun. So fun. Yeah. <laughs> so the question is, has any of the artists yet flipped a golf cart in the, in the, in the raceway? Not that we know of. I don't think so. We, that's going to happen. You know oh, it's yeah. going to happen. <laughs> At some point in time. It's probably going to be Adam, if anything, <laughs> uh, our front of house guy who's, who tends to uh, let a little loose. So we'll see. Nice. Yeah. So for our listeners, like we've talked before, but maybe there's new listeners or listeners that have not heard you guys before. What would you want to tell them about Point North? I would say Point North has built an amazing community and fan base that is really 
feels special to be a part of, and I think that's a really big thing to look for when you're looking for new bands and musicians to listen to, specifically in this scene. And I think, oh, that's crazy, Florida. Uh, it's Florida, they're everywhere. And you know, I think I think we write music from a very honest place, and I think it's genuinely like really relatable. Not in a cliche way, but in our own kind of way. And if you're looking for high energy and catchy, fun music and stuff that that cuts deep, uh, we're the band for you. We're this is like a new era, and it's really cool because you know we're we're about seven years old now. We're working on our third full length album. Nice. We're really catching a rhythm, I think, sonically. So I think now more than ever, we feel like we found our pocket, we found our home, and we really get to kind of embrace the new sound and the heaviness. And it seems to be a place that we're really flourishing right now. So that's just exciting because it, it's I think it's tough for bands to evolve their sound a little bit. It's risky. You feel like you're going to lose your fan base and you don't really know how it's going to be received. I feel like we've been able to do that a little bit. And right now we're like finding where we belong. We're embracing it. It's embracing us. And we get to just kind of be ourselves like we've never really been able to before, which feels so good i love that you know it is a common theme i talk about too because nowadays artists can and do experiment and go off of that you know track a little bit and i i think it's important because if you're an artist why you want to play the same shit all over again why you want to write the same shit all over again accepting nowadays too Totally. You know, like, I'm looking yeah. at your shirt, okay? And I'm from the beginning of DRI. Yeah. Okay? And in the beginning, before they crossed over, I couldn't go to a DRI show because yeah. I was a long hair. And you weren't allowed at punk shows as yeah. a long hair. And punks can go long hair we were shows. We talking about this last time. Yeah. Punk and metal and it reminded me that DRI, because DRI is the reason we're sitting here right now because they were like one of the first crossover bands oh, yeah. that grew out their hair. And showed the punks that yeah we're we're long hairs now too. It's crazy too because it's like I feel like nowadays it has its own ways of changing. I feel like yeah. whether it's you know it could be punk and hardcore and metal. I think now you find bands influencing more like even like R and B in their music. Like metal bands are doing more R and B or they're doing more uh, how do I say just like electronic even hyper pop really stuff. More yeah more genres into yeah. the pot. I think and they, people can admit it too. Like as an example, Megadeth. Mm -hmm. David Mustaine is majorly influenced by jazz. Yeah. Oh, I love it, yeah. And he never talked about it yeah. till now. Yeah, exactly. Like, because yeah. God forbid you should say that in the 80s. We're uh -huh. jazz oh, no, metal yeah. band. Being canceled for your genre. I feel like nowadays, like, too, like, people expect you to say something that's, like, totally out of left field. You yeah. Know what I mean, and I think it's really cool. And I think also, back then, like, if you were punk venturing into metal, it was, like, you're kind of dipping your toe in the water. I feel like now it's, like, so not strange to go left field. Yeah. You even see like metal and country like blending it's together. It's almost like encouraged to go more left field. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fans are like smart and they know when things are redundant and repetitive. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Well, not only that, but there's so many bands nowadays, especially in these genres, whereas back in the day there were a handful and they didn't sound the same. Yeah. Okay. But nowadays I'm finding so many bands, if they only have that one focus, sound exactly the same it's the bands that let other genres influence their music that yeah. have that unique sound that makes them to me a band also like you can't like there's so you find so many bands who play like will play like, the same type of guitar for 10 years and it's like okay it gets old you know what i mean i feel yeah. like as you evolve as a band you have to be so like involved to it gain new fans and keep the old ones entertained mm -hmm. i think it's hugely crucial that's i think that's substitute I feel like we find ourselves doing that too, especially with the new album that we're doing. It's just like, just how far can we really push the mold to be a band that is not afraid to experiment? Yeah. Not afraid to show. Also, just pulling the things that we like. I think it's great, you know? Yeah. That and keeping everyone happy. That's like the big thing. Is it was True. Too yeah. Far left. It's the 85 15 rule. I think bands yeah. nowadays, going back to that theme, is they're not as worried about keeping the bands happy like you were talking about the fans. I remember when Metallica started like what we called selling out and there right. were 25 of us that were hardcore metallica fans like i went through their first show ever and as soon as the black album came out I'm like fuck them posers i'm never <laughs> listening to them again and they're still my favorite band right, to this exactly. day yeah, yeah, yeah. but they took a huge risk but here's what i found out what happened i wish i was as smart as them when i was a teenager because i remember saying fuck this with the music industry meaning because of that and then they did this 
And yeah, we, 25 of us left them for a period of time and then they gained millions and we ended up back anyway, you right. know? And so now you can have a festival like Welcome to Rockville. Like I was at the Us Festival on Heavy Metal Day. The headliner was Van Halen. Like Triumph played on Heavy Metal Day. Wow. You know, so like we have real metal festivals now because of the selling out if you're going to use that as the word. I don't think it was they really sold out. I think when I was a teenager, they sold out. But I was a stupid teenager. Now I realize they were just being musicians that were experimenting with what they wanted to play instead of us hardcore fans saying, no, you have to stay a garage band. Right, and, and then ultimately the fans caught up to it. Yeah, and it's like it's my. I think the band that did it for me was Green Day, and so yeah. we, we. I found Green Day when they released American Idiot. I think I was like eleven at the time, and so I think for that point in their career, if you were a diehard Green Day fan and you heard American Idiot, you're like, oh, this band sold out. Yeah, like now they're now they're doing Broadway shows, and it was it was the Green Day that I was really introduced to. So I'm like, what do you mean? Like they sold out? This is like the greatest piece of work ever, and then. Right. And so and then as I got into their older stuff and like really what Dookie was doing and everything like, OK, I got to understand. But ultimately, yeah. like Green Day never sold out. Right. They just like it just takes time for their fan base to catch up to what they're doing. And wouldn't you as a band want to evolve anyway? And wouldn't you yeah. want to try to get as many people listening to your music of as course, possible? Of course. Like, I mean, that's it. That's the summary. It's OK. So it, it's like the it's like the puzzle is old as time. It's how you find your band or your artist's sounds and make it in a way that can reach the masses. And that's like the bottom line. And, and I think that's what a lot of people call selling out is when you take mainstream or mainstream music influence and implement it into your music or somehow to where your music has the has the ability and the potential to reach three million people versus three hundred people. Right. And of course, when you're like uh, an early on fan, that tends to be a little gatekeepy. And as soon as you get to all the, you know, the rest of the fan base in the world or country or whatever, everyone's like, well, they sold out. And that's like kind of the, the bad taste in their mouth. Mm -hmm. But I was the same way, too, with like bands. When I, when I heard their big new album, that was the one that reached millions. I was like, eh, it sounds a little poppy. Right. You know, <laughs> exactly. But, but I also grew up and I also played music and did the same kind of things with my own music. And I understand and I get it. Like Andy said, like the fans figured out their way back to it, and you know, looking exactly. at those albums, here I am. And it's funny, he was making me think when he was talking about Green Day, that that's who I am with Bring Me the Horizon. Like I started getting into Bring Me the Horizon at Danny Wimmer Festival already. That was when That's the Spirit came out, so that's oh, yeah. how late I came into it. Yeah. And I love that album. I love Sempaternal. And I like the older stuff, but I never heard the older stuff. When I went back to it, I'm like, oh, that's badass. But there's a lot of Bring Me fans that are like, oh, sellouts, blah, blah, blah. And I heard, I heard Ollie in an interview. He's like, why do I, have to, why do I want to write the same song all over, over and over again? And the same song through the whole album. You know, and that's why when everybody's giving them shit for, you know, playing different types of music. And to your point, bringing other genres into it. You know, because he's a musician and an artist, and he wants to see what he can do and how he can better himself as that musician and artist. I think a I think a band like that too. Like for every one song that comes out, they have a hundred demos that all sound different versions of that. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And like I think that there's type of band where it's like when you write songs like they do, and the songs that you hear come out. I think with them, it's like one of those things where they try every option possible on the table and go how far, like, like we were saying, take this to the left, take us to the right. Yeah. And then when they do it, they make sure it's right. So when it does come out, it's insane. And I feel yeah. like from their concerts, I feel like you see a lot of people who are like, love the older stuff, but are getting, catching up to the newer stuff. Well, again, to the point of what we're, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're like me with Metallica. It's like they're they're yeah. coming coming around. And then, you know, they'll, they'll release something old school type. Yeah. And it's like, oh, there they are. Yeah, they're still in the back pocket, you know what I mean? Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. 
for sure. So what else do you want to tell people about going on after Welcome to Rockville that they have to look out for? Tell them your socials, too, web, all that stuff, and how they buy your merch. Absolutely. we got a brand-new single out called Bring Me Down. You can find us on all our socials at, at Point North Band, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, anything. Find uh, Bring Me Down. we got merch for Bring Me Down in our web store. You can find that on Shopify and Spotify as well. Yeah. And, yeah, stream Bring Me Down out now. Well, you guys didn't bring me down here at Rockville because you fucking rock. And uh, thanks a lot for giving us great music, and thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Appreciate it. Pipe, thank you, man. It was great to be here again. Great to be. And I've also been meaning to ask you, like, who did your nails? Because that is bad fucking Uh, ass. uh, This is a creative touch in Encino, California, and this was $60, which is pretty crazy for some gels. And you can show them any photo. But what a great job. Like, yeah, uh, crazy, right? They're artists over there. I tried to do the same thing in Portland, and the lady did not know how to, how to, how to draw. So it, remember I got the Halloween ones that looked really bad? That was funny. I mean, like that one right there. Like, ha- who would be that good to make that so detailed? And these tiny this is brushes. like the raceway. Yeah, tiny brushes, dude. I don't know. It's my it's my wife and I's like date day once a month and go get our nails done. And oh, see that's cool. Now yeah. I'm glad I asked that question. Yeah. That's good to hear. What Hell yeah. what do band members do with their wives? Uh, there it is. Kick it, kick it to get our nails done. Man, nice. I don't know. Eat a lot of food. <laughs> I love it. Say, babe, listen to this rough mix. I swear it's not mixed yet. Is it a good song? That kind of stuff. There I don't it know. is. Well, Pretty much it, man. I can't wait to see you guys again. Thanks for being here at Welcome to Rockville. Thanks, Pipe. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.